Hello and welcome to Sunday Night's Animal World Live Pinda in Global Q&A Special. That's great. Hi everyone and welcome uh, to tonight's Animal World Live, which is obviously a Q&A special after the premiere of Pinda and Glove. So all your questions you might have had while watching the premiere, this is your opportunity to ask us. Uh, and we will bring in uh, Matthew and Brian and, uh, and Viam, if we can convince Viam to come on camera a little bit later. And you can ask them some of the questions that you might want to ask from their parts and how they felt. Uh, uh, during uh, that incredible, incredible experience. Well, let's see who's with us. Hi, Becky, Joanne, sorry you're a bit late, Sparrow, uh, Chef Lady, Brandy, um, Cookie. <laughs> Thanks, Cookie. Uh, Mary, um, African Sky, Carol, uh, Coast Cider, and who else have we got here? Rosalind, uh, uh, Alex, lovely to have you all with us. I'm just trying to catch up and everything. Yeah, so that's um, our first ever one hour full uh, sort of behind the scenes documentary about some of the stuff we get up to here at Painted Dog. And uh, the other nice thing is that, well, the other thing is that, that this will only be up for a week. So if you want to share it with someone, please share it. And um, the reason it's only going to be up for a week is we are going to try to sell it to one of the big uh, TV people at some stage. Um, so it will only be up for a week, so there's a week's worth of viewing before it will go off YouTube and we're hopefully going to be able to, to at a later date, uh, sell it on to uh, one of the TV networks. Hello Irina. Only I sound far away. No, you're wearing the wrong mic. Well, they're both connected to the same thing. Is that better? both connected. You can wear both. And then we'll swap them. I'll just put that there. So, um, how am I sounding? Touching. This mic is not coming through. Let me just swap around. How's that? Is that working as well? Okay, we're just trying to sort out the sound quickly. Okay, apparently Vim says I can go on talking for now. Matt is on it. Oh, yeah, now I'm dropping the mic. Okay, Matt says it should be fine now. Okay, let's carry on. Um, Mars. How long until the Ellies understand their, their new home, uh, water sources and food through the seasons? By exploring. So where they're released, you always release them close to water source and, and easy, easy food sources. Um, and then slowly from there, they will expand their range. Now, I, do, I don't have them with me, but yeah, so um, it, it, it's amazing how as soon as they find a new water source during the dry season, then move again and move again. But now obviously with the wet season, with lots of the pans being full, they're just wandering and, and checking where they can go. They've explored probably about 70% of the Reeds Bait Reserve so far. Um, and of course, because they did arrive in the dry season, so there wasn't a lot of water around, only the permanent water points. So they would base their explorations away from the uh, water points. Mm -hmm. uh, Coastside, they were all together within uh, about four hours of the release. Um, and not even actually. They, they, they found each other very, very quickly.
D, you will be able to watch. Um, uh, you can watch it after the chat with uh, absolute pleasure. As I said, just remember everyone, this, this, it'll only be up for a week before we remove it. Um, so get in there now, watch it now, um, share it now, but because in a week's time it's going to be gone. But yeah, so I mean, there's actually some funny stories that happened. Oh, there we go. Well, Mike's back normal. There we go. There were actually some funny, funny stories that happened that uh, weren't in the video. Um, some of them we couldn't film. Um, we had a an interesting, uh, how do I say it, interaction with some policemen um, in, a, in a roadblock at, uh, oh, what was it, about two, three in the morning? Yeah, just after the little town of Carolina. Sorry, I'm trying to get this out. Um, we didn't film that, obviously. Policemen don't generally like to be filmed and stuff like that. Um, and uh, it, is, it is a bit of a funny story, as I was saying. So what happened was, um, obviously, we were under COVID um, restrictions and whatnot. And we sort of all just forgot about the fact that you can't drive through the night and etc. So... We walked, um, we drove up, we were just in front of the elephants and we were pulled over at this COVID roadblock because um, no one was supposed to be out. Um, I think it was between 11 and 4 a.m. at the time and obviously we were driving. Um, so we all sort of just forgot about the COVID uh, restrictions uh, and uh, the truck with the elephants was coming so the police pulled us over and I got out of the car to speak to the police. And I was like, no, no, our permits are in the truck. So we did have permits to operate, but we didn't have permits to operate outside of a curfew. Um, so I was like, no, 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 the permits are in the truck. We're moving elephants. And uh, the, la the lady says, no, you guys are naughty boys. You are lying. You're up to something. I'm like, no, no, I promise we're moving elephants. They wait for the truck to come. Wait for the truck to come. Um, and uh, the truck came. And then I said, look, there's elephants in there. And you could sort of hear them shuffling around. And the police lady had a big torch. And I said, just be careful when you shine the torch in there. Sometimes the elephants don't like the torch. And she's like, no, it's cows. You guys are up to nonsense. And she put the torch there and that the elephants just went, and like move, dom, dom. She's like, no, okay, okay, go, go, go. These are very dangerous animals. Just keep moving, keep moving. Don't stop. So we went straight through a, a, a police roadblock at about two, three in the morning um, without permits because uh, of the elephants. And the police lady was like, uh, very happy to see the back of us and the elephants. She was very worried the elephants were going to jump out and wander around the hills of Carolina. Rosin, five elephants were transported. Ulriki, no, they didn't try return to Pinda. It's, it's really far. I mean, it's, it's 700 plus kilometers, 800 even. Um, and uh, they, they didn't try return. Obviously, uh, the Reed Spray's fence is also quite good, so they have tested the, the boundaries of where they are, but they are very, very, very happy and relaxed. And a little miracle happened as well. So we, five elephants came, and three days after they were released, a baby was born. So one of the females was pregnant, and that little baby is doing exceptionally well now. Mars um, will bring in VM a little bit later. Um, uh, he's still in FC, but he'll come towards, uh, uh, towards the end to answer your question. So if you guys have got any questions for VM, uh, keep them in your mind or write them down and, and we can post them up to VM when he comes. But, um, well, let's, um, uh, Babs, the five were a herd. They were a little nuclear family herd. That's why they were chosen. But um, let's bring in Mr. Joubert. Brian, here we go. Come take a seat. So, if anyone's got questions for Brian, hello everybody. Yes, not yes. often we get Brian in front of the camera. No, not very often at all. We don't even have you that often behind the camera these days. No, so I've been relegated to the office. Now yeah. I'm just an editor. So that <laughs> editing work was uh, Brian. Mm. That incredible editing, the music choices, and that was all Brian. This was yes. Brian's baby. Yes, this, it this, was. this one hour. And he did such a fantastic job. Mm, thank you. <laughs> um, let's have a look. There we go. Annie says, yes, a funny but very typical South African experience dealing with um, the police at 2 o'clock yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Mary, yes, VM will talk on camera. Oh, my. 
Canadian says, hi, Brian. Judith's all saying, hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. <laughs> Everybody. Um, so, Brian, what do you, what do you want to say about that experience, um, or whether it be the actual experience itself or even the, the edit and the, the work that went through to creating that? Yeah, what an experience. That was something I never considered in my life that I'd ever be doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, something completely different. Driving, how far did we do? Round trip, 1,400. 14, 1,500 Ks. 14, 1,500 Ks. Going off to Pinder, somewhere I've never been. Also, lovely place. It was wonderful being somewhere new. Seeing something different, you know? Yeah. And moving a herd of elephants. Can you believe that? So, it, it, yeah, it was phenomenal. It, it really was a, a spectacle, something... Yeah, something outrageous. I mean, whew. yeah, who gets yeah. to go yeah. travel with a herd of elephants? <laughs> um, yeah, it was fantastic. Really Co side is Brian, how many hours filming and editing does a film like this take to make? Oof. Many, many, many. We were, we were in Pinder for 10, 10 days. days odd. So 10 days of filming. 10 days of filming, editing on site, um, uh, just building the, the weight screens and getting things started. Um, so 10 days on and off editing, filming, and then once we were back at sifting through all the footage. It would have been finished earlier, it was my fault. Yeah, I needed some voiceovers, voiceovers for me, but I was Brent. running around. <laughs> it was my fault. Yeah, so um, it takes some time. This, this was at least a solid month's worth of editing to yeah. get through this. Because it, you have to think about the music, you've got to think about the feeling and try and Getting match the, the timing shots right and the and timing and, 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 but... Yeah, a good time, all in all, and yeah, hopefully people enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed editing it. Mm. Um, Giraffe Girl, I was pleasantly surprised to see the Ellie's and the baby on my summer visit to Reach Break Game Reserve. Our guide was stunned. We knew who the Ellie's were. Yeah, wow, there we go. Yes, um, they, they are such a nice herd of elephants, mm. and they've settled in so, so, so well. Mm. Let's have a look. What do we got? Mars just says, brilliant work as always, Brian. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank always you happy <laughs> that you are part of the pack. Hmm. Um, let's have a look here. There we go, Wendy. How difficult was it to get all that footage down to one hour? Because um, how many hours do you think we had? Oh, we have a lot. We've still got plenty. We've got so much footage, actually. <laughs> 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 yeah, we've got hours and hours and hours. So there was a lot to choose from. Um, which is sometimes a good thing and a bad. Uh, yeah, it's just time consuming. It's time consuming going through the footage, finding what works best and putting it in. Yeah, I think my first rendition of this edit was, it was like an hour and a half or so. And then it was, it was too long. I dragged on. It was needed to be cut down to size. And then, yeah, I got it just under an hour. So, or just over an hour, I think. Mm. Velma says, Brian, you birthed a beautiful baby. No, oh, thank okay. you, Velma. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I mean, I mean, we, we even we even did we even we didn't film when we went to the beach, did we? No, we missed we even that. went to the beach. Yeah, we did. We had like I even caught a beach. fish. You did. I caught a fish. No. I was very happy. <laughs> we had like one day of, of gap, um, yep. and there's I mean, as I was saying, quite a lot of stuff that we couldn't film and didn't at the time due to well, police or mm. whatnot. Mm. But um, I mean, we'd been down there for about seven days, and so we're getting really close to the the actual day and we got a phone call that the whole thing might be off yeah um due to big weather coming in but luckily yeah. that weather stayed it arrived yeah. the day after we left so yeah. we're, we're very lucky there yeah monsoon arrived just yeah. as we left so whew, it yeah was, it was lucky <laughs> we're, we were very very lucky oh thanks so mm. much liz um i'm trying to think what it, i mean obviously you got to see some fun stuff um mm. that always vehicles mm. break yeah always yeah it's it's a it's it's a plague vehicles breaking it is know, a never-ending story it here. is a never-ending story <laughs> um and uh, we were quite lucky we were able to find that spare part i think mm. it was that when we went to three or four three hardware stores mm -hmm. then, yeah. before we mm. found a place and it was the last place to check in the whole of Klitlui. we yeah. started in kobokazi we went through like the villages and trying to find um everything <laughs> Cookie wants to know, are we wearing our Panda Dog t-shirts for the walk down the red carpet? Of course. Of course. Of course. The red carpet <laughs> to the kitchen for dinner after this. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then straight to bed because we uh, live drive early tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, yeah, so obviously 
Penda is quite a special place for me and my family. Uh, my dad is one of the original founders uh, and brought those elephants to Penda. Hmm. So uh, they were the sec first or second group ever to move adult elephants hmm. in the world. It, they said it couldn't be done. And uh, actually a really, really interesting story that happened amongst that is that um, the elephants had been on Pinda for a couple of weeks and they'd been released from the Boma and they escaped hmm. into that community where we went looking for spare parts. Oh, um, <laughs> and they all disappeared in there. And I'm not going to say any names and stuff because it was there's some stuff. There were certain people who said, just shoot them yeah. and whatnot. And my dad was like, we've spent all this money moving these elephants. We might as well try save them. So the first time ever in the history of elephants that you said you couldn't move elephants on their side, on flatbeds, they would die, their lungs would get crushed, but they didn't. They moved that. And the vet was Pete Rogers. Oh. Yeah. So that was in 1992, I think. So there's a strong possibility that one of those elephants I saw as a kid being released yeah. on Pinda, we got to catch, move and release over here. Um, so there, there, there's actually over 200 elephants on Pinda currently. So um, that is why they do need to move elephants off there from time to time, uh, because otherwise there, there will be too, em too many elephants for the reserve. And of course, moving animals is far better than having to euthanize them. Yeah. Okay, well, we see, um, who should we bring in next, Brian? The next victim. The next victim. He's right there. Is it there? Is, <laughs> it, is it the man who hates the camera? It's the man lurking in the shadows, behind the scenes. No, there was a question about your organizational <laughs> skills, Vim. Oof. 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 All right, all right. Here we go. Let me see if I can find this. All right. Here we go. Mars would like to know, Vim. Um, I'm curious about Vim's organization, reorganization styles. All the parts and the details. How do you keep what's straight in your toolbox and where everything oh, is? No, there's no organization. <laughs> it's uh, organized chaos. Organized no, chaos. Yeah, no. My toolbox and now after this, this last few days are all over the house. Is it oh, electricity and stuff. And stuff. So we are, we don't have normal electricity at the moment. So we, we have, we're not allowed to shower. We've got to swim. Um, we're hoping we can get the electricity fixed before New Year. But I'm not hopeful. Unless we try to do it ourselves, but... At least I learned you can do a very decent bath for about seven litres. Seven litres, yes. You can wash everything that's important, including your hair. It's mm. like Cape Town mm. now, mm. and Cape Town <laughs> and water rationing. Oh. So the problem is um, our water pump works on three phases. Mm. Mm. So I think we're down to, what, less than a thousand litres. I oh, know, we're on mercy now. Are we on mercy? Yeah. Oh dear. Because so the tank's leaking as well. So oh, the tank's leaking as well. in there, it's just coming yeah. out. Oh, uh, yes, Velma. Um, yeah, 1,400 kilometers is about 859 miles. Now, you would have heard us there saying it was going to take us, oh, we'll be at Ledwood. We left at mm -hmm. 7. We'll be there at 6 tomorrow morning to the release. That wasn't the case. We severely miss, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Miscalculated uh, how fast the elephant trucks would move. So I think what we did, we did um, 700 kilometers at an average speed. About 37 or something? No, it was less. It was like 34. 34 kilometers an hour. Um, and we obviously had stops and stuff. So let me just... So, seven... 20 miles an hour. Just over 20, 20 miles an hour and 700 kilometers. Yeah, it was 19 hours, more or less of driving that we did at an average speed of 36 with with our stops and stuff mm. like that we got great fuel economy on the landy yeah the, the landy has never <laughs> ran the, that ran that lean um vim where did you learn your photography filming and the technical stuff Oof. um yeah i used to work for the south african national broadcaster which is like state funded yeah sabc yeah, yeah. So I did my internship and I just stick there all the years. Until and Wild Earth Until Wild Earth, yeah. yeah. And then you, you, I met you know, we met there. And I ran away. You ran away from mm. them. Used to do like soccer and all cricket. All the fancy and, stuff. And, yeah. and um, <laughs> news. Did you yeah. do live news? A lot. A lot of live news. So that's where Vim learned um, his skill. But I think he's, he's, he's mastered it now. Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff we use for these live broadcasts, you can't buy it. It doesn't exist. It's all made by Vim. Um, from scratch, a lot of it. Yeah, we use common household items to do yeah. broadcasts. <laughs> yeah, Vim will take a, a blender and turn it into a signal repeater. <laughs> Somehow, he does. 
Okay. No, the Ellie's were not testy at all, um, uh, Canadian. And they were actually very relaxed. I think they were just quite happy to, to be out of those crates. So I actually saw during the broadcast, a lot of people were asking, um, are they awake? They are awake, but they are sedated. So there is a sedation, but they are awake um, during the, the, the move. But they, uh, as Pete was explaining, there's different sort of slow acting sedatives that just to keep them calm and stuff in the crate so they don't go mad and bash everything around. Vim, the master of the cable tie, says uh, Canadian. And then, um, hooray for Vim, what would we do without him? I don't know. I really don't know what we'd do without Vim. It, indeed, Liz, it's Vim's voodoo. MacGyver of the bush. And he says, just like my dad, Vim. Awesome. Vim, do you have a preference? Camera work? Or tech? Uh, I'm starting to enjoy the tech more now. Uh, but camera work it does have its awards. But um, I guess I'm getting a bit old for that now. Yeah, it's, it's the young man's <laughs> yes, game. Yes, that's a very physical game there. Yeah, you got to be... Oof. Long hours. It's hard on the body. It's you know, yeah. concentration. It's not a, a wimps game. <laughs> KDG, do you cut your table cable pies properly? What do you think? Oh, yes. No one stitches. Yes. <laughs> it's company policy. It is. Actually. If you don't cut the cable mm. ties properly, you'll get into trouble because they scratch you mm. and they cut you and you've got to make sure it's flush. Yeah. Um, Velma, yes. Um, hopefully early next year, as soon as uh, we get out of summer when it's a bit cooler, we will be bringing in a couple of big elephant bulls that will be moved onto the reed spray to join the herd. Sparrow, we're fortunate enough Fortunate to be seeing the evolution of VM. Mm. So VMP, mm. should we should we let you run away from the camera now? I uh, left FC unattended. Oh, okay, you got to get back to FC. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll bring in the young man oh. who's uh, doing oh. all the a lot of the heavy work on the camera. Yes. Young Matthew. All right. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Take my. Earphones out. No one is talking to us. Oh, yeah, yeah, Vim's, Vim's, yeah, so there's no one going to be talking to us from FC. Uh, Vim's <laughs> running back to FC. So, I mean, that's yeah. how good FC is now. Vim can leave it and it, we don't, uh, well, touch wood, nothing <laughs> crashes, nothing goes wrong. He's on his way. Uh, thank you, Sarah Kate. Um, Velma, how much duct tape do we go through? Actually, less than you would think. We go through a lot of insulation tape. Yeah, we're pretty good with duct tape. It's very um, expensive. Yeah. We Sometimes we use special form tape, which is like 10 times the price yes. of duct tape for special occasions. But uh, yeah. We weren't saying, hi, Matthew. Hello. So now is your chance to ask Matthew questions. Um, and we're saying, bye, Vim. Vim's somewhere between the <laughs> studio and, and final control at the moment. And lots of hellos from Matthew. Matthew, what was your highlight? Of the whole Pinder trip, wow. Yeah. Um, I think definitely lifting those Ellie's into the truck. Um, it was quite an experience. I mean, I had just joined Painted Dog less than a month before we did that excursion. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I joined in, what, it was late March. Um, and at the beginning of this year, I actually didn't even know what I was going to do, really. Um, yeah, this job was not even final. We yeah. were still talking, Brent and I. Um, I don't even think I'd had my interview yet at the beginning of the year. <coughs> uh, so yeah, so to go from that in four months' time to be lifting Ellie's and then a, a truck. And then a week later, ten days Zambia later after we get back, I'm flying to Zambia, Zambia. with Cheetah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just that whole progression. Um, Vim is back in the FC. Oh, I can hear him talking through my earphones. Um, Thank you, Chandra. Uh, Carol, basically, how did it feel to be involved in the whole process? It's very special to be involved in something like that because not only do you get to experience it, uh, it's a place where I can learn. I don't think I would have learned this much uh, as I have this year if I wasn't with Painted Dog. Um, and that's very special to me. Um, I've always enjoyed wildlife, but I've never seen it as a career path before Painted Dog because I just never even thought I would get it. It was like this club that you couldn't get into. 
Uh, and yeah, so to be able to join and to be able to learn so much about animals has been an absolute, absolute privilege for me. Yeah, so Felm is asking, what is, your, what is your background? And did you always want to be in the bush? Yeah, uh, well, there we go. I think I've partially answered that. Yeah. Um, throughout school, I was filming and pretty much working for free uh, since I was 13. Uh, and sort of just progressed from there very slowly through school. Uh, by the time I was in matric, so 18 years old, I had enough experience to land an internship the following year. Uh, and it was a very good internship, I was at a very good company, and I learned a lot more than just film there. I learned all about business and production and clients. Uh, and that ended very shortly. Uh, that ended just after three months uh, because of COVID, which is quite unfortunate. But yeah, I went home after that and started on my own, started my own things. And then by the end of the year, I was talking to Painted Dog. So yeah, it's all happened very quickly after school, um, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. Yep, Matt, Matt, Matt is a wonderful addition. We're very, very happy to have him as part of the team. Uh, Carol says, thanks, Matt. We love having you here. Oh. And uh, I know you, those who follow us on Instagram and stuff will see all those beautiful reels that are coming yeah. out. That's Matt's baby. So all those little videos coming out, that's all Matt's baby. Um, I think he's far more organized than me. That's for sure. Brian's been working very hard at it as well. Oh, and, and Brian. has been a yes. big help. <laughs> yes, Brian. Brian cracks out the videos and then I'll crack up some and be posting them. Yeah. So, and uh, so it's going to be very exciting. Um, very, very exciting. We've got some exciting stuff happening next year. Mm. Um, fingers crossed. Some of the stuff we can't really speak about too much yet. Um, but uh, that's going to be very exciting. And Matt might clock a few more countries on his belt. Fingers crossed. Uh, in the next year. Um, hopefully, if everything goes according to pan. Uh, let's have a look. Cookie says, um, Matt, you are so young and talented. You have a bright future. Thank you, Cookie. Um, Wendy says she loves your shorts. Likes my shorts? Yes. Oh, thank you. These aren't even the fancy ones. Yeah, the, the bright ones that you wore in the Pinder video. Yeah, the, the pink and purple ones. The are... pink and purple. Well, those are quite bright. <laughs> They're very bright, those. Um, at the end of the reels, it is indeed a wild dog, but it's not a bark. It's a wild dog contact call. It's a who call. Who call. Yeah. Woo, 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 which will be at the end of almost all our videos these days. It's like a new little thing we're trying out. That was Brian's idea, actually. Yeah. There we go. Sorry, credit back to Brian again. There we go. Well um, done, Brian. Brian said he wanted to have a memorable sound at the end of all of them. Um, so when you hear that, hopefully you think of Painted Dog. Thank you very much, Guy. Um, uh, delighted for Matt. All hard work, I'm sure, as well. Yes. Well, work hard. And as long as you do, you're doing what you enjoy. Absolutely. It's, it, it makes the hard work a little bit easier. That's very much been my direction from the start. Um, just focusing on what I enjoy and seeing where it took me. <laughs> uh, KDG, yes, we did find Elephant Cam 3 after the elephants pulled it down. It survived. Um, we do need to redo the cables for it. But we think we just need to paint it. I think it was, we hadn't painted oh, that one. Oh, you said it was the color. I think no. they saw it, it was stuck out. Um, so hopefully we will have that back up and running um, in the not too distant future. Oh, I think they meant shorts videos, not your shorts. Oh, <laughs> oh well, <laughs> good segment for my so, shorts. Sorry about that. Thank you, Velma. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Um, yeah, so sorry about that. <laughs> Matt does have some interesting shorts as well, not just his short videos. <laughs> I know, I, I saw that. You zoom in on my shorts? Yes. <laughs> um, so guys, if you do have any more um, questions about the elephant moving or anything that happened, um, now is your time. Um, I'm just trying to think of what other little funny stories. There was so much... The, the, uh, the, the part with Matt and the gate, we were all secretly hoping that the gate was going to shock Matt. But he was very careful every time yeah. he opened that gate. Every time he touched the gate, you could feel the voltage, just like a little bit through your fingers. Yeah. It was most definitely live. Yes, uh, we were <laughs> waiting. We were waiting. I think every time Matt opened the gate, we picked up a camera. Like, please get shocked. Please get shocked. Um, yeah. But you, you warned me quite a lot before I even touched the gate the first time. So well, I was trying to make you already. nervous <laughs> after traveling already for Canadian answers. We need a matte fashion show. Fashion show? <laughs> for the catwalk here in the studio. Yes. 
or through the workshop. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, it was an absolutely incredible experience. Uh, and, and Zululand is one of my favorite parts of South Africa. Mm. Uh, and not somewhere I go to often these days, but it was really nice to go down and, and, and sort of stomp around my old stomping grounds when I, from when I was little. So, uh, um, yeah, we're just waiting for some more questions here. Oh, that is an excellent question, um, Mars. How long overall to make the plan? Where and who first hatched the idea? Okay, so the plan to move elephants onto the reed spate has been in progress for probably five years. And different problems with permits and stuff um, and accessing the right elephants. So because it is a housing estate where people live and whatnot, um, we wanted to make sure we got elephants that were used to game drive vehicles and not wild and scared and, and possibly a bit dangerous for people who might not have that much experience in the bush. So we looked, at, my dad was uh, the one driving that, and they looked around all over the place for, for elephants and, and Pinda came to be the, the best option with animals that were really relaxed and ready for game drives and not aggressive towards vehicles. Um, so, uh, so that, then my dad came to us and says, why don't, why don't we try live broadcast it? Now, to do a live broadcast like that costs a lot of money. So we were not in the, fi as a company, we were not in the financial situation to just go do a live broadcast like that for free. Um, we uh, would have destroyed our budget. Um, so we had to go out and find a client um, for that. So um, I met Dex Kotzer from, from uh, YPO and we started chatting and he said, is it possible? And I said, I think it's possible we can do it but we need to get down there at least 10 days before just so we can have no blimps but so that those meetings and discussions I think took about six months um, to finally sort of get okay we're gonna go do this this is the budget this is this this is what okay we're going um, yeah and obviously the in, incredible thing is that obviously the Ledwood um, and Dirk Schumann and that they were actually paid for that whole um, relocation and that was incredibly expensive. It's over fifty, sixty thousand mm. dollars um, to move those animals. I mean, what does a helicopter cost to put in the air per hour? You um, about six and a half thousand rand an hour. Yes. Um, plus the game capture teams, plus everything. And is it how many people were involved in the entire process of moving the animals? Oof. On the ground, the ground teams, there must have been 35 people, maybe even a bit more. Surely more. Between the different teams. So uh, because the elephants all darted at the same time, they go down at different times. So there's different teams going to different animals. Oh. Um, so probably close on 40, 50 people on the ground. Um, uh, a mix from Pinder's conservation team and uh, Kester Vickery's uh, conservation solutions. Now, when it comes to moving big animals and whatnot, there is no one better in the world than conservation solutions. Um, they did. They moved 500 elephants in Malawi in a year um, between national parks. Um, the rhinos being moved from here to Rwanda, a giraffe being. Uh, they also moved a couple of hundred giraffe from here to there. It, it, all those type of big jobs generally end up with conservation solutions. They are truly the world's best at catching and moving big animals over big distances. Or similar plans there with darting with a helicopter and moving in trucks. Yeah. Or so no guiding with helicopters. No. Reserves. So it's very difficult. Um, the only things you, with game capture that you chase with a helicopter into a boma is like Impala. Wild. And, wild dogs. Oh, we, we've done it with wild dogs. Yes. Oh, but, but that's very unusual. Normally you just oh, dart really? wild dogs. That's okay. rare. Like that doesn't happen. Net, and that was net capture. That wasn't a boma. Oh, okay. So yeah. what uh, the helicopters do with like Impala and Wildebeest and Zebra, they'll actually have a big boma and they'll chase them with a the helicopter into the boma and then pull it closed. Um, but yeah, so normally with all the big animals like giraffe and stuff, giraffe is actually the most difficult. Yeah, I can imagine. Because you can't put them to sleep completely because then you can't pull them up. So you actually half put them to sleep and then you run around their legs with a rope and you trip them over. I think I've seen that yeah, somewhere. It's, it, it, is, it is not fun. I, it's one of the, I love doing game capture. Giraffe capture is scary and dangerous. Mm -hmm. Most people get hurt on that. Um, yeah, um, it's, 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 a, it's a big undertaking. 
Kennedy, and um, there's quite a few women on the Pinda conservation team. You would have seen Charlie, um, who was up in the chopper, choosing the elephants, monitoring and stuff like that. Um, on the game capture teams on the ground, you very, very, very rarely um, see women. Uh, and it's a lot to do with a, um, a physical strength thing. So especially when you got to sort of pick up and carry. So just just the, the, the conveyor belts that you've got to lay inside there weigh 100 plus kilograms. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very, very, very big Although uh, big I job. see um, now, you just sort of see them around, there's a lot more female vets, yes. at least in hood spreads. Well. Or is it a general thing now that they are... No, there, there's always generally been quite a lot of female vets. Uh, traditionally, wildlife is not a, a strong suit for female vets. Uh, again, because it can be very, very physical. Mm -hmm. So even something, I mean, when we were doing, a couple of years ago, doing game capture with a kudu, for example, uh, the dart didn't go, it went subcut, which means subcutaneous. So it didn't go directly into the muscle, so it didn't get a lot of the, the sleepy juice. Mm -hmm. And um, we walked up to grab this kudu. And uh, as we grabbed it by its horns, we realized it wasn't so asleep. And uh, both of us weigh 90 kilograms, which is about 220, 230 pounds. And we had to hold, because if you let go of that kudu horn, he's going to whack you. Mm -hmm. So literally both of us just held onto this kudu and he ran straight through all the thorn trees with us, but you can't let go. So yeah. uh, generally it's just a, it's like a strength and weight thing um, to be able to deal. But there are definitely some incredible female vets that are coming through at the moment. Um, and the industry is changing a little bit. But traditionally, no, wildlife veterinary uh, is... Is, is is not a, a, a strong suit for for ladies but there are some incredible vets coming through now and spe specifically in the last little bit of um what <laughs> coast Silas says my girlfriend's tougher looking than you matt lol i'm saying my money's on my girl <laughs> um but it is changing um, but as I say, our game capture is traditionally, at, at, at the moment, a male-dominated uh, job. And it's just purely got to be able to lift heavy things and run around like that. Um, yeah, but um, again, that, that, that is changing, as, as Matt was saying. There's quite a lot of female vets and a lot of female vet students that we've been meeting recently. Thank you, Lisa Marie. Um, yeah, but it is. It is. It was a very exciting, exciting, exciting thing. And well, we're going to go do it with some elephant bulls next year. Yes. We don't know whether we're going to do it live. Um, uh, as I said, it costs quite a lot of money to do those live broadcasts, particularly when they're a couple of hundred kilometers away. Um, but we will be trying to figure it out um, as we go. So we will. We will try um, broadcast that live. But we can't guarantee. We don't even. We're not even 100 percent sure which reserve the elephants will be coming from yet. Sure. So that, that also makes a big, um, depending on whether we are going to be able to get a live feed out of there, a live signal. Um, other relocations we're working on, um, I'm not sure. They sort of pop up out of nowhere and then go, 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 go. We've got 10 days to get everything organized. Um, but I'm trying to think what else. Um, might be working on some cheetah, definitely we're working on some wild dog, not relocations, but collarings and stuff like that mm. um, early next year with EWT. Um, and there's always stuff, um, we've been chatting to some of the vets about doing some stuff with the vets specifically on snare removals and things like that. So that's also going to be very exciting. Um, yeah. I think that's about it. Yeah. So guys, this is your last chance to ask us any questions. Otherwise, I'm getting quite hungry. Matt is always hungry. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure he's excited for spaghetti bolognese this evening. Um, uh, so if you do have any questions, now is your chance to ask your questions. Brian, do you have anything else to add? Apart from a big sigh. No, not really. Not really. <laughs> Do you remember any questions that were asked on the, the movie that haven't been addressed yet? I think I got most of them here. Uh, Wendy, no. So the, the Reach Parade Reserve paid for everything. Pinda donated the elephants for free. All right, Canadian. Matt, do you have a preference for filming a drive? What animals do you find the most challenging? The most challenging? Mm, to film. Birds are pretty difficult. Birds. Um, and I love Brent, my birds. Uh, until Brent decides to look at a butterfly. 
Uh, <laughs> butterflies, birds, yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> what did Vim say? Vim said, it's Brent is ears. by far the most difficult animal to film. <laughs> Uh, KDG Christmas Day lunch was excellent. I didn't end up doing all the roasts because I would have been cooking till today. Um, on so a on a fire. So we did one <laughs> one roast, um, and then we spatched cock our chickens, and we had a lovely piece of beef as well that we just did on the fire, with lots of veggies. Turned out very well. Yeah? It did, considering. But we did start cooking at what like I started cooking at like eight. Well, I started the fire at eight. Yeah. And then started cooking at about nine thirty. It was a, a long day of cooking. We ate it, what, three? Yeah. Yeah. We were supposed to eat earlier, but cooking on the fire. Um, Song of Rain, there are some pangolins. There is some pangolin stuff. Um, I can't confirm it yet, but we are talking about doing some pangolin stuff in the new year as well with uh, the vets. Uh, Becky, any information about live drives next week? Um, I think the schedule is going out on the app today. Or oh, it's gone out on the app. Ask Bubble. Ask Bubble or Charles. Um, if it's not out today, it'll be out tomorrow morning, uh, the live drive schedule. Um, and then, of course, uh, New Year's Eve, we will be doing a New Year's Eve uh, free-to-air special at... Well, it'll be midnight for us. 11 o'clock for us, starting and ending at New Year. Yes. Uh, if the Lions are something around, we might go live earlier. Um, and if the Lions are around, just keep a lookout. We might be doing random lives. Um, if the Lions do come back and they are hunting or we find something interesting. Oh, there we go. Hippo to be released from Dad. I forgot about oh. the hippos. Um, but need to catch them on the Blyder River, and they are not feeding regularly on the Lucerne. So at this time of the year, there's lots of grazing. Um, so hippos, what you normally do is passive capture. So you put food out, and you wait for the hippos to keep coming to the food, and then you run behind them and close them in, and then dart them. You don't want to dart them in water. It's incredibly difficult. Well, the Blyder River is an incredibly difficult place to, 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 to operate in. Um, and hippos, even if you dart them in the water, they'll go down, but they have an automatic breathing response. So even if they're fast asleep and darted, they'll pop up and breathe every four or five minutes, hmm. even if they're fast asleep. So they can't drown. So even when they're asleep in the water, they'll just pop up and breathe <laughs> automatically. It's, a, it's, a, it's an instinctive... Part of their lungs or something. Yeah, it's an instinctive, um, an instinctive sort of sure. mechanism that's there to... Um, keep them going. I'd be but a little bit scared of catching hippos, I think. Actually, I'd, I'd take it back. Hippos are almost worse than giraffe. I, I, just before you arrived, I was trying to catch hippos with Ben and Joel, and it was very scary from a little boat. Mm. It was very scary. Velma, yes, that will also be happening um, very shortly in the new year. Um, we're just finalizing a few things. Um, so for those of you interested in traveling to Africa, hopefully travel is allowed. Um, there is, we're going to do some set departures, some set departures means um, a set date and a set amount of people um, for our conservation safaris. Um, those conservation safaris will include a day with um, tracking wild dogs with Grant Beverly from the Endangered Wildlife Trust. Uh, it will, one of the, the safaris will be hosted by either myself or Kaya um, and then there will probably be Matt filming or someone filming as well um, parts of the trip. And then also you will get to have dinner and uh, a talk from either Ben Miller or Joel Elves um, from Wildscapes Vets um, or Pete Rogers. So, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening with that travel program. Cookie, I'm um, hopefully Charles or whatnot get that from you. Um, but I think it is now time to go get some dinner, Matt. You hungry? Yep. So thank you so oh, yeah. much for joining us. Uh, a big thank you um, to everyone uh, who was involved in this incredible, incredible experience. So uh, Dirk Skuman and the whole team from Ledwood, uh, Kai and Dorval Manor House, um, the Steinbach family from Blobunk, and uh, of course my team and the Pinder team, the conservation team at Pinder, uh, and a big thank you to the Painted Dog team and all their hard work this year. Next year, more hard work but more fun.
Night, guys. Bye-bye.